almost every day we hear about climate change and its impact on our environment caused by greenhouse gases. But what are greenhouse gases? And are all greenhouse gases the same? Let's take a look. Welcome to EMS Mastery, where we look at the successful strategies and tactics to master environmental management and sustainability. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Andrew Marlow. This episode looks at greenhouse gases. What are they and are they all the same? Let's look at the most well-known greenhouse gas. The most abundant greenhouse gas is carbon dioxide, or sometimes called CO2, after its chemical structure of one carbon atom and two oxygen atoms. Carbon dioxide is formed when a carbon-based material, such as petrol, natural gas, coal or wood, is burned. The CO2 gas travels into our atmosphere and acts as a barrier to any heat escaping from our planet. This is a positive natural mechanism as without this barrier the earth would rapidly lose its heat and the planet would be much more colder than it is now. However, too much CO2 can trap too much heat causing climate change and other impacts on our environment. Concentrations of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere have risen by around 40% since the Industrial Revolution. This means that atmospheric mixing ratios of CO2 are now over 400 parts per million, compared with the pre-industrial levels of 280 parts per million. So, carbon dioxide is the main greenhouse gas, and all other greenhouse gases are benchmarked against carbon dioxide, as we will see later. If you're getting value from this episode, please hit the like button or subscribe. Our next greenhouse gas, methane, comes from both natural and man-made sources. There are certain microbes that can produce methane, as well as through geological processes. However, human factors include the burning of fossil fuels, raising livestock, particularly cattle, landfills and waste breakdown producing methane, rice cultivation and the burning of biomass and biofuels. With reference to the global warming potential, which is a measure of the interaction of a gas with the atmosphere, methane has a global warming potential relative to CO2 of 25. This means that one tonne of methane is the equivalent of 25 tonnes of carbon dioxide. Concentrations of methane in our atmosphere have, after a decline in the 1980s to the year 2000, and a period of constant concentration in 2000 to 2006, started to increase to around 1,900 parts per billion. Indeed, methane gas concentrations are about 2.5 times as much as they were in the atmosphere in the 1850s. Our third greenhouse gas, nitrous oxides, occur naturally in the soil under vegetation and is produced when microbes break down to form nitrogen and their oxides. Similarly, the oceans produce a significant amount of natural nitrous oxides during various processes. Human activities also result in nitrous oxide being produced, such as the production and use of synthetic fertilisers, which have increased the production of nitrous oxides in soil. Agricultural runoff, where fertilisers and soil leach into water systems, and the burning of fossil fuels and biomass. With reference to the global warming potential of nitrous oxide relative to carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide is 298. 
This means that one tonne of nitrous oxide is equivalent to 298 tonnes of carbon dioxide. Concentrations of nitrous oxide in the atmosphere have had a steady rise since the 1970s and now stands at nearly 335 parts per billion. After these three main greenhouse gases of carbon dioxide, methane and nitrous oxide, there are four other less abundant but equally important greenhouse gases. Hydrofluorocarbons or HFCs are a family of man-made organic compounds that contain fluorine and hydrogen atoms with 19 HFCs identified as greenhouse gases. These gases are frequently used in air conditioning and as refrigerants with R134A being the most commonly used HFC refrigerant. Perfluorocarbons are man-made compounds containing just fluorine and carbon. Nine perfluorocarbons are identified as greenhouse gases and they are used in specialist applications such as fluoropolymers, refrigerants, solvents and anaesthetics. Next up is sulphur hexafluoride, which is a molecule consisting of six fluorine atoms attached to a central sulphur atom and is primarily used as an electrical insulator or arc suppressant. Our final greenhouse gas is nitrogen trifluoride, which is used to remove silicon and silicon compounds and is increasingly used in the manufacturing processes of flat screen television displays, photovoltaics, LEDs and other microelectronics. A neat way of summarising all of the effects of the combined greenhouse gases that we have reviewed during this episode has been prepared by the United States National Oceanic and Atmosphere Administration, or NOAA in the form of an Annual Greenhouse Gas Index, or AGGI. Taking all the current greenhouse gases into account within the Annual Greenhouse Gas Index, and with the index set at 1 for the year 1990, shows on the right-hand axis of the graph a clear evidence of the rise of greenhouse gases over the past 30 years, especially the rise of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. So, to summarise, there are 33 greenhouse gases recognised by the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Some are man-made only, and others are both naturally occurring and man-made. They vary in abundance from carbon dioxide to specialist chemicals used in manufacturing. They vary in their greenhouse gas effect by the global warming index. All of them are increasing in our atmosphere and should be a cause for concern over their impact on climate change now and in the future. If this episode has helped to advance your understanding on greenhouse gases and how each gas can have a significant impact on climate change through their concentration in the atmosphere and their global warming potentials, please leave a comment in the box below. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel to ensure that you don't miss out on other episodes on environmental management and sustainability. Until then, thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, you can watch other episodes by clicking on the boxes in the top and bottom right, and to subscribe to this channel, click on the link to the left. Thank you.